All right, here we're going. We're doing it. This is uh, the defense's closing argument. I haven't seen it yet because I just got finished loading up the prosecution's closing argument. Um, that's why I needed to do this in two parts because the other one was an hour and 20. It's a little lengthy, but it was really good. It was juicy. I hope y'all check it out. <laughs> um, even if you don't watch me do it, go and uh, watch it on Law and Crime, whatever, whatever you want to do. But it was really good. This one, I kind of just scrolled the dial just to see how long her closing argument is. Oh my God, it's way longer than the prosecution. So <laughs> I guess we're just going to go through it and it's going to be a long video. Uh, I was like, Dad, blame. They're, they're really pleading their case, so we're gonna, we're gonna let it play. And of course, I'll be stomping and doing some commentary. They're probably gonna be cracking me up, but we'll see. All right, let's let's get into this because it's a lot of ground to cover. Here we go. And probably thank God it was her because the guy, I guess he's, I don't know what nationality he is, but he was terrible when he was cross-examining uh, the psychiatrist for the uh, prosecution. It was terrible. That guy. So I, I'm kind of glad we got her. There you go. I mean, she does speak well, right? I mean... She's doing the best she can, but even her, some of it was just really, and y'all know what I mean. There is not one moment that I want you to think that this defense is about whether or not he deserved the treatment that he got. Because That's not what not. I thought. Or that the fact that he is vulnerable or had uh, medical issues from early childhood is just uh yeah they did they wanted that evidence in <laughs> he's bad justification for what happened because it is not however we are in a criminal courtroom and what you have to determine is whether an act, a horrible act of parenting, a bad act of parenting, bad choices amount to a crime. And in this case, they do not. Oh my God. Okay. I told you at the beginning of this trial that Tim Ferreter had to make tough choices based on the experience that he had had with his son. And I'll talk about that more in detail. But what I want to start with is sort of the bedrock of any criminal case, which is an understanding of what reasonable doubt is. There is an instruction that you will receive, and we'll talk about that uh, later on in my closing argument. Approach. Oh, my God. Right off the bat. Oh, my God. Buckle up, baby. Get your snacks, because shit's fixing to get real already. Damn. And that's without prejudice to the uh, state to address it in rebuttal. So there's different ways to understand reasonable doubt. And I think that a helpful way to understand it is in terms of sort of the other standards that we have. So at the bottom here, you see reasonable suspicion. And that is like a super low standard. That's why it's on the bottom. So that is the standard that a police officer has to have just to sort of stop you on the street. Oh, Sustained. Oh, my God. When we talk about reasonable doubt, it is in reference, right, to all the other standards. Because beyond a reasonable doubt is the highest burden in our justice system. Normally, when we talk about a criminal case, it's different than, for example, a civil case where you are deciding whether or not something is done by the preponderance of the evidence. That's about 51 percent. The next level up from that is clear and convincing evidence. And that's the standard required for the government to take your children away. 
Name. All right, I'm going to instruct the jury that the court will provide and has provided you with the instruction on what reasonable doubt is. Attorneys can comment on the law that the court has provided, but uh, anything else other than what the court has provided on the law, um, the attorneys cannot address, and, and you're to disregard that. So with that instruction, Ms. Murad, you may continue. Oh my God. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Clear and convincing evidence is the standard by which the government Overruled. can take your children away from you. And then higher than that, you have beyond a reasonable doubt, which is the highest burden in our justice system. And this distinction is important because when we talk about bad parenting or someone that shouldn't have their kids, there's a standard for that in the legal system. There's a system in place for that. What you are being asked to do. Does anybody know, did they take their other children away? Where are their other children? If they're being charged with abusing this boy. I mean, there was no evidence that they abused the other children, but still, just saying. Good Lord, this has got off to a rocky start. To do is determine if something is a crime, if it rises to the level of reasonable doubt, such that a person whose liberty and freedom is at stake, as it is in any criminal case, um, should be found guilty of a crime. Well, thank you for clarifying that because damn I wasn't sure <laughs> you are not being asked whether you condone of Tim Ferreter's actions I put up an expert Sheila Rappa who says she does not condone of Tim Ferreter's actions and I didn't do that uh, not knowing <laughs> what she was going to say this case is about a different sort of um, location and time than what the state's talking about. There is no dispute that what Tim Ferreter did caused harm to my own expert got up and told you that. Yeah, she did. The question before you is whether or not that was done with the appropriate intent to be considered a crime, whether or not those elements that the state mentioned are met. And so I want to talk about um, those in specific. Let's start with this. Um, what are we actually on trial here for? The state mentioned uh, a instruction towards the end of their closing argument regarding the things that happen in Arizona. And of course, the defense brought some of that in. It, it offers context. But the decision that you are making is whether or not Tim Ferreter committed a crime during about the six week period that he lived in Jupiter, Florida between January 5th to January 28th. That's when the, the video goes up in the room. They move in a little bit before Christmas. That is what you are being asked to do. If you believe that Tim Ferreter committed a crime in Arizona based on the testimony, but you do not believe that the state has proven beyond a reasonable doubt that he did so in Florida, you must find him not guilty. Oh, my God. He was doing that shit in Arizona. Come on. They know it. The jury knows it. I don't normally do this, but th this is a lengthy closing, so I want to make yeah. sure that we talk about all the different sort of reasons why Tim is not guilty. I'm going to talk about these all in turn. They apply to different instructions. So rather than taking you through instruction to instruction, I want to focus on... I guess that's all she's got right now, guys. It's, she just has to go through the instructions item, line by item, line, and go, well, this, this means this, So, but, but this is what we got. She's not going to be able to do what the prosecution just did. Well, we have evidence this, 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 boom, boom, boom. I mean, I think this is going to be an hour and a half of this. Now, I haven't seen this yet. I'm watching it with you right now. I, I don't know what I, I, I mean. Maybe we might get some bombshells in here. I don't know. But it sounds like the same crap that she's been peddling the whole trial. On the reason for it being not guilty and the instruction that it applies to. So we'll go through <laughs> these one by one. Oh, my God. I first want to start by talking about sort of two ways that you can find Tim not guilty that are pretty related. First, he did not have criminal intent. 
this applies to every charge, right? Because criminal intent is something that is unique to a crime as opposed to something in a uh, civil case like negligent intent or something along those lines. Even if you find that the state has proven every... Does any abuser think that they're not doing they're not doing a criminal intent they're just abusing because they're assholes and they're abusers i don't know just a thought the element including that criminal intent element as to child abuse and aggravated child abuse you can still find him not guilty oh because God. of the parental affirmative defense now the way that that reads is that it is not a crime for a parent of a child to impose reasonable physical d discipline on a child for misbehavior under the circumstances, even though physical injury resulted from it. And this is the important part. The locking him in a box wasn't reasonable. If you find that the state proved beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant was not a parent, that's not an issue here, or if you find that the state proved beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant's physical discipline was not reasonable under the circumstances, you should find him guilty if all the elements of the charge have been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. This is a little hard to understand, but this is a two-step process. Yeah, so basically this whole thing, guys, she's just going to be reading that and then commenting on it. Reading it and commenting on it. So far, that's what this is going to be for a damn hour. Good Lord. First, the state has to prove every element of that aggravated child abuse or child abuse beyond a reasonable doubt. And then the second bit is they have to disprove this affirmative defense beyond a reasonable doubt. It is not the burden of the defense to prove to you that it was reasonable. It is the burden of the state to disprove to you that it was not. I think they did. I think they proved it. This trial is not about this diagnosis, but I understand that it's been something that we've talked about a great deal throughout the course of this case. It is, however, essential to understanding the sort of persistent behavior that Tim Ferreter experienced. And it allows you to understand how difficult it was for Tim Ferreter with the sort of ongoing behaviors. And I want to start with sort of the thing that's based most in science, which is Dr. Rappa talking about a neuropsychological exam. So that neuropsychological exam, as Dr. Rappa testified to, has multiple parts. And this is testing that the psychological and psychiatric community relies on routinely. And it allows us to have data about a person to explain how they are the way they are and why they are the way they are. This neuropsychological testing has multiple parts and it includes something um, from himself and from an adult parent. Dr. Rappa explained that. And in this particular testing, there was no reason to believe that there were any sort of validity issues with the information that she received. She also said that even though the testing was from just a couple uh, months after January 28th, that doesn't matter because it still is a test of executive functioning. What that testing revealed is that it has clinically and elevated levels as it relates to inhibition and emotional regulation. And what Dr. Rappa told us is that that means it, it explains this sort of persistent behavior that's not stopping, that becomes explosive. When one has a uh, and when he feels angry or has sort of a, a strong emotional reaction, he's not able to control that in the way another person might be. Yeah, so let's lock him in a box. Good Lord. Where is this going? We've heard this all. We've heard it all. This is not juicy so far. This is regurgitated. He's bad. And they didn't know what else to do but lock him in a damn box for three over three years. He also has a lack of inhibition, and that's why when he has consequences, that's not something that he's entirely understanding. 
She said that it's very hard for someone who tested like and did to be in control of themselves, and they have a lack of insight into their own behaviors. She also explained that this testing, right, goes back to early childhood, and that's not really in dispute. The state's own... Keep in mind, when they tested him, he was 14. He's already been sub subjugated to years of abuse. How did that affect the testing? Think about that. If they wouldn't have been locking him in the, the box, kept him with a consistent therapist, because we all heard that they, they would get a therapist, and then he'd see him a couple times, and they'd get a different one, see that one a couple times, and so forth and so on. Well, let's just throw drugs at the problem and dope him up. Then now let's lock him in a box on top of all that because he has a bad attitude. This is ridiculous. He was 14 when they discovered this. And then give him the psychological examination. Yeah, he's going to be jacked up. Good night. Expert Dr. Wade Meyer said that he believes he has probably an attachment type of disorder from the time that he lived in an orphanage. Um, again, there's no dispute that the Ferreter's actions exacerbated that, right? Dr. Rappa told wow. us that. Damn. That's something that the defense is completely conceding. <laughs> but both Wade Myers Ouch. and Dr. Rappa say that this is something the ferreters did not cause. It is from very early childhood neglect. And what we see and what the key is, um, and Dr. Rappa talked about this, Wade Myers had to concede to it, their behaviors before 2018, right? That's when, when we're talking about the timeline, we know that this was born on February 28th of 2019. About a week prior to that, per his own testimony, a room was built in the garage in Arizona. Before that, while Tracy was pregnant with a latch was put on his door in Arizona. So that has to be late 2018, early 2019. Prior to that time, Dr. Rappa testified about records that she reviewed from 2015, elementary school emails, about ongoing and persistent behavior. And I asked her, because look, it's, I understand, and, and the state made light of it, but you know, stealing sprinkles or activities that are just considered childhood behaviors. It's very hard to distinguish what constitutes regular childhood behavior and what constitutes a disorder. And I asked Dr. Rappa that during her direct examination. And what she said is that it is the persistence of these behaviors, that despite there being consequences, despite there being boundaries, they continue and continue and continue. I think this ship's done sank. In cross-examination, Ren admitted in great deal to his own behaviors, right? He admitted to harming other people. He uh, admitted to offering his brother beer as an experiment. Um, Sev de Borzati testified that a time that they were visiting an Airbnb in Sedona and was found with knives in his backpack. And the cross-examination on that was, well, did he threaten you with a knife? Did he use a knife? An 11-year-old shouldn't have knives in their backpack. Right? That, that's everyone's common sense. That as a young child, there are certain things, certain boundaries that you cannot cross because you're a kid. And admitted to stealing. Again, again, minimizing the torture, abuse, treatment of the child by saying, he did this, he did that, he did this. He's bad. Stealing from his own home, stealing from the parents of some of his friends. He admits to running away. He admitted to breaking into his uh, tablet at his last school in Arizona and searching violent terms that concerned his parents. And that was the reason why he had to get his technology taken away. Helen McCoy, who was a teacher of Vince, testified about an incident that he had with his sister. And in cross-examination, the state was asking Dr. Rappa about these sort of specific incidents, trying to m minimize them or showing that, you know, any one act is no big deal. And that's with any kid, 
right? Any one act that a child does. Yeah, but remember the testimony of the sister. She's older than him. She said she never felt threatened by him or afraid to be around him. Out of being a kid or immaturity is never a big deal. But it's when it continues and doesn't stop over and over and over again, and when it escalates and when it becomes persistent, and when in this case you have a neuropsychological exam that supports that it becomes a disorder and something that it... Maybe he just needed more attention. Maybe the dad and the mom, like I said in the previous video, if, if you watched my uh, opening arguments of the prosecution, I had got, I had came to a conclusion or a thought that he didn't uh, attach to them because they never showed him love, like like children and even animals. Not comparing children to animals. Don't misunderstand. But they have a sense, sixth sense of things. Maybe he sensed that they didn't love him. He needed attention. So kids act out if they're not getting. A balance. I mean, kids need a balance of of being, you know, uh, disciplined and they got chores, but they also need love and understanding. Honey, I love you. I don't want you doing this. I mean, I don't think he got that. This did that, that is problematic to the child, to the parents, and to everybody that he's around. So Kellen McCoy testified about an incident where when entered uh, his sister's classroom, had humiliated her in front of the entire class. And during cross-examination, I recall Ms. Coakley saying something to Dr. Rappa, and Dr. Rappa was like, no, but it seems small, but that's not the case. And Ms. Coakley interrupted her at that time. But you have to think about the steps it takes, right? to decide to go to an entirely different part of the school. That's what I'm testified to. Pretend to be another person. Decide. I, I think it would take what she just said, put that in Tim's corner, what it would take for him to get to the point where, yeah, I'm going to build this box. I'm having a contractor over, put the light on the outside. Yeah, what did it take for him to get? Good Lord. Decide to point out your sister. Take, go to that classroom. Have the courage to come up with this entire story. That is something that gets to the level of being manipulative. And those are the concerns that were happening with him throughout his life. And that's corroborated per Dr. Rappa prior to 2018 through records that she reviewed, through his own deposition that she reviewed, through, I think she listed off 25 items or, 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 or 26 items that she reviewed in coming to her opinion. Dr. Rappa also testified how when you have um, a lack of trust in a parent-child relationship, and I, I guess you can rely on your common sense for this, but when you have a kid, right, and they're growing up, you rely on trust. But we rely on that in any relationship that we have, that what we see is what we get, right? That what we expect when someone says, I'm going to do this or I'm not going to do this, that they actually follow through with that. And that relationship of trust is really important between a parent and... How many parents out there who you buy snacks and you're like, okay, these snacks are for your school lunches and they go and eat them? I'm sure every parent, now some parents probably don't care if they eat them, I don't know. I do. I don't want him eating a bunch of sugar. <laughs> so yeah, I have to monitor snacks, but that's, kids do that. My mother always said you should never put temptation in front of children. Like don't, don't just leave the money out and test them. I don't know why she, she told me that years ago, but, um, yeah, kids, kids do dumb stuff. And a child. And when it is broken, Dr. Rappa said that the response that a parent has, the natural response is to control, right? And we see that in our everyday lives. If you have a kid who's out, you know, joyriding, you don't get the car, right? If you are someone who is fighting at school, you're going to be in a timeout. You see in this case that it is taken to an extreme, 
but it is also in response to an extreme. Because that kid joyriding who doesn't get their car stops. Most people's children stop when they say, you can't do this anymore. I'm going to take away your items. I'm going to put you in a timeout for a reasonable amount of... She's blaming him. <clears throat> I don't know if y'all are picking up on this, but I'm feeling like she's completely blaming the child for being locked up and abused time. I'm going to ask that you stop doing it. I'm going to ask that you not, you know, hurt people at school. I keep getting emails from school about how your violence is becoming a problem. I need you to stop doing that. Eventually kids stop. But Ruben didn't. It persisted over and over and over again for years. Blaming him. I want to show you a video of how Tim Ferriter responded to run. To the next step. So if you don't give a shit and you want to run away, see how that takes you. I'm not chasing you this time. See how it goes. If you want, should I put this ankle thing back on you? Because I, I, I kind of need to know where you're at just so uh, you don't you know, get hurt yourself. Because you have no fucking idea what's out there. You think you do. All 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds, these kids you're around, you might think you know what's going on in the world, but you don't quite know. Give it a try. Go ahead. And i got to put the ankle bracelet on you. Because I'm responsible. And when I say I'm not giving up, I'm not quitting, you got me forever. So deal with that. But if you want to go throw your shit away, if you want to ruin your life, if you want to destroy this shit, I'm not going through this again and again and again. I'm not time for this shit. I got to deal with... And why is he using such profanity to that child? To the next step. You can hear Tim Ferriter and as Rappa said, in the worst tone ever, sometimes, um, attempting to parent, right? And it is not perfect. I don't think any parents, you know, would say that their parenting is And I think he's cussing at him and fussing at him while the kid's in the, in the, the cell. Perfect or, or even great in retrospect. But what he's telling him is, if you keep running away, I'm going to have to put a monitor on you. And of course, that sounds like an extreme thing to do. But what he tells him is you're 14 years old. You don't know what's out there in the world. I have to keep you safe. Because if you keep running away on the street in the middle of the night or during the day, you're going to get hurt. Someone is going to harm you. And I am your parent. And I have to keep you safe. And it got to the point where they're talking about putting a monitor on him. That's how often this was happening. And no parent, no parent can allow their child to run on the street, right? No parent can allow their child to be lost and not go find them. So he's telling him, you have to stop. He's telling him, there is a big world out there and you don't know about it. And I know you think you do, kid, because you're smart. Right? You're able to trick people. You're able to convince them that your name's Richard, I think, came out in a video. But it is a big world out there. And there are people that could harm you. Yeah, like your Tim parents. Ferriter was trying to raise a child who could make it when he's older without having a criminal record, without having a million issues at school, graduating without getting kicked out because we saw in the videos that he got kicked out of his last school. I don't think if his own son was doing this, his own blood son, he'd have done this. Again, I I'm going to bring up, I they never portrayed or exhumed loving emotions to this kid. That That's just my opinion. In Arizona and with positive social skills. 
if you are hiding knives and pretending to be people that you are not, and stealing money from your friend's parents, and bringing a scalpel to school, and getting into fights so often that your elementary school is sending emails in the fourth grade. When you are six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, what are you going to be doing when you are 20 years old? And another point I wanna make. Well, if he was doing this at six, seven, eight, nine, 10, why wasn't there consistent therapy? There was never consistent therapy. Dr. Meyer's testimony says out of all of them, if y'all remember his testimony, there was incidents, yeah, he took a calculator, he had some sparkles. Some other kid, they both get in a scuffle, the other kid started it. I mean, how many of these instances are the boy initiating now, obviously, this kid wasn't a saint, but he's a kid. And they didn't do nothing but start locking him up at such an early age. Is this idea, when we talk about malice and intent, that this was something that Tim and Tracy Ferreter enjoyed, right? The benefit of your kids growing up right? My, I have a bunch of friends with toddlers. They're just hyper vigilant all the time. They have to watch every minute of what that kid does because they're going to get hurt. They're going to put their hands in the socket. They're going to, right? Yeah. And I think I, I made this claim earlier on the other video that I think her time was spent with her own children and not with showing him. And I think that affected him. Now, he probably didn't realize, right, what's going on. He's just a kid, but internally, subconsciously, she, she's devoting all this loving care to her children. Now, this I'm just speculating, but it does make sense that she was caring for them and then shove him off to the side. Right? That, that, that's that life. And as a parent gets older... That goes away a little bit. You can go out to dinner. You can grab a cup of coffee on g grab a cup of coffee on a Sunday morning. Tracy Ferreter is watching his laptop, and for a reason, because he has broken into numerous school laptops and hacked into his entire school's IT system. He's smart. And she says, "I need Damn. you to do your homework so that I can see it on the camera." This is not fun for them. Waking up in the middle of the night to see if your kid stole an iPad from his sister. Why weren't they at the kitchen table? I have to monitor my kids on his laptop too. Because they all have iPads now for school. Right? Checking the history or sitting here. He'll come in my room. He'll do his homework. If he has to print something up on the computer. Yeah, it's inconvenient for the parents because the school has the damn internet on their on these laptops that kids have access to. And let me tell you what, this boy ain't the first boy that's done all of this stuff because my son will come home and go, oh yeah, this kid got in trouble because he hacked the computer where he could bypass the firewall. And all these kids are doing that. So they could go go to different sites, play games or whatever it is they're doing. They do this. Kids do this. And it's a parent's responsibility to try to protect them as best you can. I'm doing the best I can, right? Do your homework. Let Put the iPad where I can see what you're doing. While I'm sitting here, whatever, I'm goofing. I can glance over and see what he's doing. And I've had to do this for at least the past three years. Monitoring his time on the, on the laptop. And also, there's a, he probably learned how to get through the panel. I think that you can put a parental control on that as well. But it sounds like th these kids are savvy with this technology. This is nothing new. I mean, I was hearing about this a few years ago from my own kid telling me what all these other kids were doing. And it wasn't just one or two kids at school. There was a slew of them doing this. It's not enjoyable for a parent. 
Staying up in the middle of the night to make sure that your kid isn't doing something they're not supposed to do, keeping that kind of hypervigilance year after year after year for almost a decade is not something that a parent wishes to do. So they were doing this but since he was four? But they had to keep this type of monitoring on. And they did. And they did it without getting him arrested. They did it without sending him away. They did it without ending the adoption. So they were having problems with him as soon as they got him. If he's 14 when they, when this happened. There was always a reason. So if you go four? through the videos, and, and, and there's a lot of them. I know you watched m many of them. If you watch all the videos from inside that room, and I know we watched about eight hours of it together, you can hear Tim telling every single time he's in trouble. You did the Chromebook again, right? You can't break into the Chromebook. There was a time, um, and, and admitted to it on cross-examination, where he went into the school, he went into a different teacher's classroom and said that he was evaluating the teacher with the school board. You can hear Tim say that. This idea that it is gratuitous. Even Maybe they should have put that boy in a gifted class because he, he could probably been in arts, been an actor, plus he sounds like he's really good with electronics. You have to recognize children's talents. I don't know. I would have thought, man, you can't be doing that, but dead blame, you're pretty smart. That's pretty smart to be able to do that. Hone in on his skills. Put him in a higher class for electronics. I don't know. Maybe that would have sparked something in his head, like, oh, wow, I'm good at something. I'm good at this. Maybe I'm in a special class now. I'm going to learn how to design stuff on the computer or whatever it is. Uh, they could have did something. And says discipline to you was always in response to something that you did. And then said yes, whether that was a timeout, whether that was getting yelled at, whether that was getting in trouble, it was always in response to something. And I'll concede what Dr. Rappa said, that the tone was not appropriate and the strategy was not appropriate. That is not in dispute here. But to say that it wasn't reasonable to Tim Ferreter, who had a reason every time it was happening, that is inaccurate. Wow. When he talks about wow. the AC, he admitted in his cross-examination, it was right at the end of my cross-examination, I asked him about when he almost started an electrical fire at the home in Arizona, right? And he talked about how he was playing with the lights and tried to mess with the light switch, and he initially said, I, it wasn't going to be a fire because I would know how to, to fix that. And I said, that could really hurt somebody. And he said, yeah. So he's not allowed to touch electrical items or, you know, equipment in his room. You can hear when Tim is talking about um, specifics. We talked about that. So I want to talk now about what you experienced during this trial versus what the ferreters experienced over the course of time. So this trial, right, is, is really talking about not just what went through, but also a parenting relationship. Anytime a kid, something's happening to a kid by a parent, there's a relationship there, right? A, 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 a parenting relationship that spans time. And what you saw was over about a week and a half. I know it feels like forever, but it was about a week and a half. And when you saw him testify, it was about two hours. That is not what you are seeing in those videos that the state played. What you are seeing in the videos the state played is after year one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen of ongoing issues. And you are sustained. And you are juries instructed to disregard the last comments of counsel. And what you are seeing is a family at their wit's end. There's no doubt about that. And I don't know a single parent, take away a child, take away all the variables, a child with behavioral issues or a diagnosis. I'm telling you, they should have hired, they, they got a million dollar house. These people have money. 
local church. If the people even went to church, I know I saw a priest or somebody sitting beside the mother during the testimony, so I don't know. But I haven't heard any religious aspect of it that they're Christian or whatever, or Catholic. But they, they could have went to a local church, got a mentor, paid him weekly, and maybe have hired two of them to split. One works a couple days, the other works. Because apparently they're like, we can't keep we can't keep monitoring him 24 hours a day. This is what they're claiming for a decade. If the dad's working all the time, the mom's busy with the other small children, what what's left of the the boy? Like I said, I don't think he was getting the attention he needed. And if they were so in fear of that, why not hire somebody to mentor him, hang out with him, play ball with him? Go jogging, go hiking, go mountain climbing. Do these things. Keep him occupied. Maybe take electronics apart together because it sounds like that's what he likes to do. I, I don't think they tried everything they could try. My thought would be, man, if I had a kid like that well, may, and I had, you know, means, good Lord, they got a million dollar home. How much did he spend on the garage being built and having the, the ring camera and paying for that? He could have paid for somebody to mentor him on a consistent basis. For Pete's sake, the, most teenagers get in trouble because they're idle. They're not getting attention. They need something to do. Now, he said something about getting them in karate, and they tried track. Look, my kid's doing two sports that are overlapping right now. Hopefully, one's fixing to end because it's driving me crazy, all this back and forth. But it keeps him busy. By the end of the day, he comes home, shower, eats dinner, does homework. He's ready to pass out. I don't know what the hell these people are doing. No, sis, or, or even just, you know, sort of benign behavioral issues. A parent and a 14-year-old or a 13-year-old, a preteen. I don't know a single parent who would want their worst couple months, their worst year with their relationship with their kid filmed on camera for everyone to see without any context, without any understanding of what was going on the years prior, without any understanding of who they are. Sustained. Jury is instructed to disregard counsel's comment on her belief on the evidence. Wow. Seriously? We talked about whether or not this was in fact malicious punishment and both Wade Myers and Dr. Rappa testified about that and they testified in a different manner. Here's what I want to remind you about Wade Myers. The information that Wade Myers had was curated by the state and provided to him in the same way that we provided information to Dr. Rappa. But what he said is that he received 40 videos of the 21,000 that exist in evidence. He received 40 videos of the eight hours that you watched of the state's evidence and the three hours that you watched of the 14 hour video that the defense put in evidence. That is not an entire picture of what happened in this family. In fact, he didn't just get all his information from the ring camera. He got it from the boy's deposition, testimony, and the camera combined. Combined. And for the time frame that these videos were shown to them. And his own testimony, his sister's testimony, this boy was caged up. It doesn't mean he didn't need to watch 40,000 hours or whatever it is a video to figure this out. If I remember correctly, when my colleague on cross examination said, Are you aware that there are 21,000 videos in this case? Wade Myers' face visibly was like, Oh, I, I didn't know that. 
So his opinions are based on a limited set of information. I don't think so. Acknowledging that he may not have the entire picture of what was going on in this family. It wouldn't have changed his mind. Dr. Rapp. We all know the testimony from the other defense attorney. Well, hypothetically, if he wasn't in the box for, you know, if he was just in there for three hours, would, would that change your mind? And he's like, no. There was question after question on the on that. He said no. Nothing would warrant what they did. That's the point. That's the crutch of this whole matter. And car he, they basically incarcerated him like they were the judge and jury and jailer. They did it all. And Meyer said no. It wouldn't change my mind. Doesn't matter what he did. He's a kid. He does do stupid stuff. Did he do some bad stuff? Yeah. Again, they should have hired a mentor. Should have hired somebody. Hell, hire a security guard. Shit. All the money you spent on building all that crap and on surveillance equipment. Damn, if you need it, hire a security guard. It might have been cheaper. Papa testified that she didn't believe that this was malicious. Um, and you can evaluate the credibility of any expert the way that you want. Um, Dr. Rappa, compared to Wade Myers, testified on cross-examination in a manner that was very honest and not in any way... It's sustained. It'll and not... To, it'll be up to the jury to determine credibility. Um, she didn't fight with the state in the way that Wade Myers did. We, he did not fight with the defense. Myers did not. He just didn't want to agree with y'all's assessment of the situation by saying, would you agree if he was only in there less time? He said no. Most kids, you put in a timeout. You take stuff from them. You don't put them in pitch black solitary confinement for Pete's sake. Whoa the way that Wade Myers did with the defense. And she admitted to everything as it relates to... Of course she did. How? What, what else is she going to say? That it was okay for them to imprison their son? Of course she said... She agreed with Myers. The only point that I gathered, and maybe y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, the only point I gathered is the malice. She didn't agree that they intentionally did this out of malice and cruelty. That's where they differ. Everything else was the same. No, they shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have locked him up. No. Nope. The harm caused, the fact that this is an inappropriate way to handle a child, that is something that Dr. Rappa said was absolutely true, right? So when she's looking at all this information, she's telling you that, the reason it's not malicious is because this was a poor effort at parenting a child that has issues that these parents did not understand and that providers did not give them. She said that it's common in mental health types of situations for families, parents, to get really, really frustrated because they are runs on clonidine, that's not working. This isn't working for sleep. They're getting advice about limit setting. That's not working. They're getting advice about um, take him to therapy sometimes. The one-on-one -on -one therapy sometimes. that he had with family counseling wasn't working. It's sometimes. not changing the behavior in it the school. Wasn't consistent. And that's happening year after year after year. Nothing and Dr. Rappa said that it's really common in her field and she's worked with a lot of children who have similar issues and a lot of parents in these types of situations as well. And it's very normal to feel extremely frustrated with the mental health system, right? Because you keep doing stuff, you keep taking them to the appointments, you keep, and nothing is helping. And not one of these doctors recommended inpatient treatment. Meyer's testimony said there was no consistency in the boy's uh, psychological care by taking him to therapy. I distinctly remember that. There was, he says, I don't know why there was no consistency. He'd see one here for a few times, see one here for a few, never a consistency. Treatment. Not one of these doctors recommended what Dr. Rappa said would be appropriate treatments for um, reactive attachment disorder.
So they're following the advice that they are receiving and nothing is helping. When I was talking to Ryan in cross-examination, he had to be reminded of this, but he said that he was going in Arizona to appointments about once a week. So many that he didn't remember who the providers were. So this idea that they didn't try is not true. Ryan himself has said that he was going and seeing people once a week. You uh, both- But according to Myers and him looking over the records, that's what he said. He said that there was not a consistent consistency where they'd find somebody that he likes, that the boy likes, and then stayed with that therapist for years until they moved to Florida, get him a new therapist. He stays with that therapist for there was never consistency. Both experts testified that there were emails between the schools and uh, the parents talking about his behavior, trying to figure out how to deal with it. Uh, Ms. McCoy, the former teacher, testified that after the incident with in the classroom, Tim came with him separately and Tracy went with him in order to try and talk to the teacher and figure out what was going on. The idea that these parents were not involved and not trying is distant from the facts. <laughs> And when they were talking to these therapists, which this was brought up too, with having more background, if the therapists knew that they were locking him up in the room in Arizona, even, even Dr. Rapper even said as well to such, is that that is detrimental to knowing what's going on. So you're locking this kid up even when you were in Arizona, but you didn't tell the therapist what you were doing. There were also non-medical efforts, and I know that it sounds silly, um, you know, the, the meditation, but this, I, you know, the, this is a family that from when this, when this child was a kid was like, okay, what are the non-medical options that we can try? What can we do to burn off his energy? What if we don't give him sugar? Maybe that'll help. What if we don't, you know, put him in karate, jujitsu, put him in these activities like track what he did in Arizona. He did chess club. In one of the videos, you can hear Tim say, um, he didn't get it because he stole an iPod or an iTouch, but he said, I was going to get you that gaming computer that you really like because for, you know, this kid is really good at IT, at gaming, at that kind of stuff. So he was, they're trying to get that's, him into activity. That's what I said earlier. He sounds like he's intelligent. He needed more guidance. He needed to be probably put in a, a, a specialty class for electronics. That would have probably made him feel good about himself. Oh, I, I'm good at this. And he is. Building them, breaking them down, whatever it is. I mean, I don't know why they didn't focus on that and talk to the school. Activities that they think will help his behavior because none of the uh, m medical interventions. And he could have took some acting classes. I'm serious. I mean, if he's good at that, actors are good at that. They pretend to be somebody else. Plus, he's good at electronics. I mean, the kid could have a future. And I'm suspecting a movie down the road, y'all. I'm thinking there's going to be a movie. I don't know. Because we're doing it. The state mentioned in their closing argument that after 2019, there was no evidence of any medical treatment. That's not true. Doctor, when asked by Dr. When the state was asking Dr. Rappa the same thing, she said, I think there were some appointments with Kenny Miller. So. And when they started school in Florida right before Christmas of 2021, there's a record that shows that they went to a pediatrician like you're supposed to go to and that um, they asked for a referral for a psychiatrist, right? And you can use your common sense here. That's not something that happens overnight in any doctor type of situation. You have to get a referral for psychiatric care. And you can get it pretty quick with, with the referral. Again, they should have went to the churches. I want to go now to Seek points three mentor. and four that I had in that sort of initial slide or roadmap. Because so I want to talk it. about with you in sort of life at home. And this goes to the uh, elements that this was not torture, which goes to the aggravated child abuse, and that it was not malicious punishment, which also applies to the aggravated child abuse. 
How could it not be torture? Locking a human being up in a room with no windows, you can't get out, you got a bucket, and you turn the light out, he's in pitch black. Somebody tell me, how is that not torture? They do that to prisoners of war for interrogation purposes to, to try to psychologically warp them. I don't know. Somebody let me know because, damn. Where women lived, whether it is appealing or not, is a room. And I want to show you, this is Defense Exhibit 2. When Ben moved into his room, this is what it looked like. And you can see the girls' rooms. The photos aren't great, but this is not, in size, that different from what the girls' rooms are. It's an 8 by 8 which is about the size of a small room. He has his toys, he has his Legos, he has everything on the walls. This is how the room started. The room itself for him was not punishment. It was his room. And if you look at the videos in State's Exhibit, I think it was 16, you can see him doing things in his room. Why, why was it his office in the garage and the kid's room was in the house? Now, I could be wrong. But I remember hearing there was an office. So why the hell did the kid have to go in the damn garage if he's just a child? If they were there for three years, he's 14. Good Lord. He was a preteen. And they built him a damn box? Room that have nothing to do with being in trouble. He is, uh, there's one video where he's FaceTiming a friend and showing them his room to show kind of where he lived. He's playing games. He's playing with Legos. There's a video in there where Peace comes in and tries to play Legos with him, and he says, no, um, I want to play alone right now. And also testified that that room was not always locked. It was locked in the evenings, when he was asleep. But it was built with the locks on the outside. And it was locked if he was in a timeout. The state also mentioned that, you know, this, this narrative that this was a secret. The Ferreters hired a contractor to build this room. It was not privately done by them. They also had the garage door open for much of the videos that you watched yesterday where women was coming in and out. And so th this is not some sort of secret. The teachers knew there's emails back and forth about women's behavioral issues. The fact that women had uh, restrict. The teachers knew he was locked in there with a bucket and turning the lights out on him in pitch black. Are you kidding me? Restrictions that other kids did not have or that his siblings did not have was not a secret. Sustained. The state's expert characterized and the state's been characterizing this room as a cell or a box. And I showed you this photo. It is. It's a room with a desk and a bed and oh toys and it has stuff on the walls until we took them out or they were taken away from him because he was in trouble. I want to talk to you about um, the bucket that was placed in the room. Oh, my God. Tim says to Rin in one of the videos that you watched on, it was one of the videos that the state presented. So it was a couple days ago. It was last week. I don't want you to use it. Call us so that you're not using it. Throughout that six-week period of time, it is used. So is he supposed to call them at 2 o'clock in the morning? They're asleep and he's got to take a piss? two to three times in total. What it is not is deprivation of a bathroom. It is a terrible solution to wanting to make sure that in the middle of the night 
cannot get out of his room. Because as you heard Tim Ferriter say in the videos, he is running away. So much so that he needs to place a monitor on him so that he is not running away. Then call the police. The truant officers come get him. He'll go into detention. What do other parents do when their kid runs away? I don't think they lock him in a damn box. They call the police. They talk to truant officers. Does he have to do a stench and a detention for boys? I don't know. But that's what happens. For Pete's sake. Way in the middle of the night, telling people that he's someone he's not and putting himself in danger. You can see in the videos of the sort of timeouts that runs in, and you can always tell because they're always like, do you still have a bad attitude? Or you don't get your Chromebook for this. You can tell in the videos what's going on that day with the family. And they come in every 15 to 30 and, minutes. And, 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 and it seemed like it was always something. You got a bad attitude. You, you talked in class. Whatever it is, it's every day. You touch the air conditioner. You did this. You're being punished for that. It's like every fucking little thing the kid did, he got hammered for. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. But that's what it seemed like in the day. You touched the air conditioner? Oh, good Lord, I'm going to deal with that. He goes, well, I was hot. Her, her answer to that was, oh, he was fooling with electronics or the light switches at the other home, and it could cause a fire? How the hell is he going to cause a fire turning the damn air conditioner on because he's hot? You can see those in the videos, and they say, do you still have a bad attitude? There's one video where Tim actually lets him out of the timeout because he says, you know what, I feel, you know, I'm, I'm not in trouble anymore. So this is on January 23rd at 7.10 p.m. Get a shot. So did you get mad when she checked your pockets? No. So don't get right out of that because you earned that. Okay? It's a, it's a nail there. It's in the ground there. Not to lie down. So throughout the videos, you'll see this happen, nothing. that they're checking in on him. They're saying, okay, are you still going to act out if we let you out of the room? And that happens to children oh, all the time when they're in a timeout, that they have to act appropriately. You got to stay in there another 10 hours in solitude with the lights out. Maybe we might let you out if your attitude changes. <laughs> now, they had a calm where they could push a button and talk to him. He could hear them, right? What the hell? Appropriately, they have to come out without a bad attitude. And it's never because, as the state represented, that it's just a bad attitude. If you go through the videos, you will see that there are exact incidents. Stealing a Chromebook, pretending to be somebody you're not, um, you know, causing an, an issue at school that it's about. We know that. We know he was a little turd. I want to talk a little bit about the actual time that Ron spent in his room. Um, it was quality it's time. It's the state's duty to present you with evidence so you can determine what the truth is in any given case. And we talked about in jury selection how the defense can sit there the whole time and not do anything, right? Um, we did not do that. But it's not the burden on the defense. We don't have to cross-examine anybody. We don't have to put on any evidence. We don't have to put didn't. on any witnesses. You didn't do nothing. If that had happened, you would have left the long weekend only with the videos that the state presented you, which was eight hours of only in his room and only getting in trouble. It was not until the defense put on a case that any context was provided to what was going on in this home in a daily basis. It is their obligation to present you with all the facts or the relevant facts. Sustained.
It is their obligation to present you with. The objection is sustained. It's not the state's burden to present with all the facts. It's the state's burden to present all the relevant facts material to the case that's being decided by the jury. You may continue, Ms. Murad. And what is material in this case is all of the evidence of what was happening on a day-by-day -day type of basis. And what the state said in their closing is that, yes, of course, there were occasional times when he was out, and that doesn't uh, negate any sort of abuse that happened. In a case like this, the reason that it is essential is because it allows you to understand the context of the relationship between this father and this son. So it made it Their okay. expert, using only the 40 videos that they provided, testified that every time it was around Tim Ferritter, you would see him tense up and be in fear. And when he was in trouble, that was in fact the case, like any child. But when he was eating freely in the home, or watching football with his dad, or doing yard work that all the Which we learned he only ate like once every 10 days. He got to come inside and eat with them. Kids were doing when they were putting up the different um, tiki torches. He wasn't acting like that around his dad because that is not a constant state in this family. It is not a constant state for and it is not a constant state for Tim Ferrader. There are other things that happen during the day. And we went through the videos and tried to provide, let me see, sort of a breakdown of the time that Ronan actually spent sleeping in his room and not in his room. And what you can see is that 43% of the time is spent sleeping. There's one time that they come in in the middle of the night, you can see it in the videos, and wake him up to look at his room, and that's on a day that there was a stolen eye touch. I'll show you that. And there are two to three times that he wakes up to use the bathroom. Other than that, he spends the vast majority sleeping at night. The time that he spends in his room, not asleep, changes over to sleeping at night in pitch darkness okay, re keep this in mind people with the door locked pitch dark you can't see your hand in front of your face you can't see shit time depending on if he's in trouble if he's in a timeout but that's about a quarter of his day and the rest of it, he spends... So even if they want to say, well, it was just about eight hours, but he was asleep the whole time in pitch darkness with the door locked, with no windows, no ambiance light. It was okay. They had to do this. They had to do this. And a few times during the day. Yeah. At school, at home, playing with his friends, doing chess club, and all the other things that kids do. And so I want to go back to this video that the state presented of him being locked out. So the state alleged that Ron was locked out of his home in Jupiter, and they showed you one video. That is, in fact, not the case. And so the first video is what the state uh, admitted into evidence from January 22nd at 12.19 p.m. We've admitted as Defense Exhibit 18, and that's available for you. You'll get all the exhibits at the end of the day. Um, the other videos that give context to this one. Because what was actually happening is that Ron was gardening with his dad from about 9.30 in the morning. Sustained. It's in the videos that you can see um, that are admitted as Defense Exhibit 18. And uh, his father actually brings him water in those videos that are admitted in evidence, and you can see for yourself. Let me have counsel approach, please. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think they're making a case. They're blaming the kid. They're minimizing his time in the, in the cell. They didn't want to call it the cell. They kept wanting to refer to it as his room. Oh, but 40% of the time he was sleeping in there. The rest of the time he was out, happy-go-lucky, going to school, skip to the doo day. But now he's locked in there in pitch darkness. All right, Ms. Murad, you may continue. 
I'm now going to play one of the videos that the defense put in. Under Defense Exhibit 18, there's three that offer context to what's going on here. And you can see that several minutes later, that several minutes later, and enters through the back door. And again, this is why this is important. You, you have to have the full picture of this parent-child relationship in order to make any determination about what the parent-child relationship is. And it does not justify the actions that Tim Ferreter took. That was a th th those were bad choices that You're he made. You're trying to justify And we are not disputing that they were harmful to Rome. What it does not prove is all the elements that the state has to Malice, prove, particularly as it relates to what we're talking about now to whether or not there's intent, whether or not it was malicious punishment, whether or not it was torture, whether that's what it constituted. The defense admitted a 14-hour video. We did not show you the entire video um, because you watched many, many hours of the state's video. Did anybody see any videos? Now, I need to go back, and I haven't watched all the videos. I need to go back and try to find them, if, if I can get a compilation of them or whatever they've put out. But we can't see them. We can only hear them. But on any of the videos, out of the 40,000 hours, were they hugging him, telling him they love him? Were they affectionate with him? Oh, no, just because they were out of the yard working to, working in the yard together is not affection. Just because he sat and ate dinner with them wasn't really affection. I'm talking about affection, like giving him a hug, giving him a kiss on the cheek, telling him he's a good kid, they love him. I haven't heard any of that. And then I think if that, I mean, she's still going on. I think she's got maybe 20 more minutes. I don't know, but she's killing me. If they can show me some videos of that, where's the love? Where is the love is what I'm getting at. Video. However, the entire 14 hours is in evidence. And what we tried to do is provide, as much as we could, different days and different sort of experiences that him was having. And it's not just relevant to show the context. It's also relevant to show what's actually true about what happened. This idea that Ren didn't have the ability to eat snacks when he wanted to. One of the videos that we watched, um, he was watching football, and there was a bag of popcorn on the dining room table, and he grabs the entire bag and starts to eat it. This is after the state's expert, Wade Myers, who relied on only 40 of the 21,000 videos, said that this child, and, and that's part of his opinion, right? Why? It well, that's what his job was to do, is to see how much was he locked up, not how many snacks he fucking got. Jeez, what the hell? That was his job. How much abuse did he take? Not not the fact that, oh, he got to eat three times a month with the family. Maybe he got to watch TV a couple of, maybe one time, of, twice a month, whatever. His job was to sit. Would you want to know if you were the psychiatrist and you're trying to evaluate what's going on here, especially in a, in a child abuse case? How much was the child abused? It's solitary confinement. Why they found 14 hours out of 40,000 hours or whatever it was. I keep forgetting that he got he that he's intermingling with the family. Imagine 14 hours over what was this? Uh, from December or February to whatever that three month that the time period for this. Forgive me for. Just not remembering that, but y'all know what I'm talking about. The specific time period where he's locked in here, right? They built the box when they moved to Florida. So he, he's had this box for three years. And you're telling me you're going to bitch about the prosecution only looking at a certain amount of hours when you picked 14 hours out of three years of ring camera footage that he was hanging out with them? Come on. Stop. Oh, crap. You're not disputing that they were harmful to Rome. 
What it does not prove is all the elements that the state has to prove, particularly as it relates in what we're talking about now to whether or not there's intent, whether or not it was malicious punishment, whether or not it was torture, whether that's what it constitutes. Don't we need to hear that again? The defense admitted torture. a 14-hour video. We did not show you the entire video um, because you watched many, many hours of the state's video. However, the entire 14 hours is in evidence. And what we tried to do is provide, as much as we could, different days and different sort of experiences that him was having. And it's not just relevant to show the context. It's also relevant to show what's actually true about what happened. This idea that- Do you think if they had more footage of him having this glorious life outside, doing yard work, eating dinner, playing with the dog, playing with the other kids, they would have dug them up. The defense should have demanded, he, Tim should have demanded get every ounce of that. You got 14 hours of footage of, of them having family ties? Come on. That Ryan didn't have the ability to eat snacks when he wanted to. One of the videos that we watched... Um, he was watching football, and there was a bag of popcorn on the dining room table, and he grabs the entire bag and starts to eat it. Sorry, this is this after the state's expert, Wade Myers, who I relied on only good. 40 of the 21,000 videos, said that this child, and, and that's part of his opinion, 41, right? 000. Why it's solitary confinement, why he believed it was torture, why he believed it was malicious. He is relying on facts that are not the whole truth. And so, of course, if you only watch those videos or the 40 that the state sent him, you're going to think, as you probably did after watching eight hours of video, that the entire life of this child is in this room. And that is not true. You saw him playing outside. Prior to January 5th, you see him frequently. Out According to you, 40% of it was he's sleeping in the cell. That's a chunk of change, 40% pissing in a bucket. Outside. Um, I know it looks like Tim Ferritter only watches football for a living, but it was December 31st and January 1st, and so there were a ton of football games coming on. If you go later, we I think we showed you January 5th, 7th, 9th, you can see them walking outside as a family, playing in the cul-de-sac, playing with people who clearly really loves um, and fixing up a scooter that he had. That is also the life of this child. Fiona testified, um, and, and, and so did Ray. This is a busy family. I think in every video you saw Tracy running around in the back from you know place to place, grabbing pictures. But you have three. Again, my point back to her time was spent with the other children. If you had a kid that was, let's say he's special needs, I don't know. He needs, he needs attention. Loving, caring, attention on top of doing things with him. She's running around doing all this other stuff with all the other kids. Why the hell did he hire somebody to help her? Kids that are around 13, 14 years old, all with their own activities, right? Has softball, has band, and at the time had chess club. And so all these people are running around. They are not eating meals at the same time. They are not sitting around their kitchen table excluding who's in his room. And the videos will call. Why didn't they, why didn't they uh, subpoena his, his uh, ball coach? One of the coaches of all these, these teams he was on. I'd like to hear their perspective. You get a lot of perspective when, when them boys are out on the field together doing stuff. The coaches get insight on these children. When y'all would like to heard that, yeah, where are they at? You never called them as witnesses. It's to for them to get up and say, yeah, he was a little turd. Nobody, nobody said that. Corroborate that. Should you wish to watch fourteen hours of video, that is what you will see. That people are running around getting snacks. Um, Tracy, at one point, we didn't end up watching this in, in in the three hours that we presented. Makes cookies for everybody and partakes in that. You see him in the earlier videos, I think it was December 29th, coming back with little styrofoam boxes of leftovers. Oh, there's the leftover issue. Wade Myers and Good the state Lord. are alleging that he had no control over his movement, where he went. And yes, at night, 
he was in the room with a lock on the door so that he could not get out, so that he could not run away or harm himself or do something. Again, if your kid runs off, call the police. Now, I know the state sucks. Detention centers suck. But guess what? He runs away. He has a, he has a room in the house, let's say, hypothetically. He runs off, call the police, they put him at the detention center, he's there for whatever, how long? He comes out thinking, oh my God, I don't want to go back there, I'm going to straighten my ass up. No, they just locked him up. Thing around the house, or get knives like he did before. That's at night. During the day, he went to school. He was with his family. And there were days that he was in trouble, and we're going to talk about that. And he would be in his room as a timeout because he was not allowed to engage with everybody when he's in trouble, when he gets in trouble at school. Um, the videos, again, it's, it's 14 hours, do get tedious. Do you ever get your, your kids in trouble? I mean, my kid gets in trouble. Okay, well, you're not playing with your soccer thing this weekend. I'm not going to tell him he can't come have dinner with me or sit with the family. Good Lord. Yes, but the reason it's important is that there are extended periods of time every single day that you see Ryan have full control over his movement, what he's eating, where he's going, walking around the house, playing outside, um, doing yard work sometimes. We talked about that. Chores like everybody else had in the family. That is a family. I don't know. It sounded like to me on a lot of this that he had more chores than the rest of them. Just saying. That is the life of a child. There are days when you are doing chores that you do not want to do, and there are days that you have to help your dad out with the yard and the tiki torches, and there are days you are chilling on the couch with your dad, watching football. There are days where you are in trouble, in really big trouble, and you are crying in your room because you are so frustrated that either you're in trouble with your parents or you did something that you didn't intend on doing. And it is the life of a parent he was crying in his room on some of those videos after the father screamed at him, slammed the door, locked it, and turned the light out. That sometimes you need um, help with the random stuff that your wife's making you do around the house. You have your son help you out. That you're running around dropping the kids off so you don't have time for everybody to sit down and have a meal or have a breakfast that is exactly the same <laughs> or or have um, or you know make everybody a, a, a different breakfast every day. You're dealing with the stuff that your kid did at school. You're getting emails back and forth and having to deal with that. Go to the school, drop the other kid off, and go to work. Pay your bills. That is the life of a parent. Oh my God. And sometimes you get me. frustrated with your kids and you do things that you regret. That is the life of a parent. And that is the life of a child. And sometimes kids and their parents are on exactly the same page. And it is a really good day. <laughs> and sometimes you couldn't be on further off planets and you are mad at each other. And you say things you regret, and you do things that you regret, but that does not make you a criminal. Wow. A room. I don't like. I, I didn't like him cussing at the boy. I didn't about like that. The videos that you saw, and what happened during the course of this six weeks. So a really important day is January fifth, and you can see from the videos that January fifth was the first day of school. And I want to give you context for what happened prior to January 5th. Oh, my God. There's a video in which you can hear Tim getting really mad at him and saying, you just got kicked out of basis. We got to start this school off right. We cannot be in a situation where you are getting kicked out again from school after school. And when admitted on cross-examination that at basis, he did, in fact, jailbreak a school laptop, right, that does not belong to him or his parents and did violent searches on it that were very concerning to his parents and that they responded to that because as a 14-year-old child, you should not be doing My son was telling me, kids look up stuff. Let's go. They do this. 
And, you know, of course, I check his, but hey, I tell him, well, you know, I can only protect you so much. You have to protect your own eyes because some things you can't unsee. This is what I told him. But he tells me that they, they look up stuff. Boys do these things. They do these things. Not just this boy. They look up disturbing things. And y'all probably know what I'm talking about. If y'all got children, and they tell you stuff, what kids do at school, they know what each kid's doing on their laptops, looking at stuff they ain't supposed to be looking at. Doing searches like that. And on January 5th in the evening, when is asked, did he do a search after he jailbroke a tablet? And was there something concerning to mom and dad? So we talked about this. Now, when we get to January 5th, the state presented some of this video. I would like to present all of it. And the oh, state represented Lord. that the reason one was in trouble on January 5th was for something as minor as stealing candy. That is not true, and that is not what the videos in the state's own evidence show. So I'm going to go through these one by one. I also want to point out that at this time, on January 5th, they moved probably, you know, week two before, based on the records. Um, he still has everything in his room. He has his toys. He oh has his bed. He has his computer. He has all the posters that he it likes. Itself. This is a time before he got in trouble, and it's a real turning point in this six-week period. Yeah. Are you a little bit or are you tired? Yeah, we'll stay a little bit. Look at the mom's face. You think she's worried she's going to go to jail for that for this shit? I wish we could see the videos. She should be done soon. This is going really wrong. there that there is something going on in this corner that Ren is doing and you'll see more context as we go through that he had something he was not supposed to have and he was hiding it right in the corner and wouldn't be able to check. Now you'll see rearranging the entire desk and bed arrangement.
How much longer is this closing? Oh my god. So, at this point, he's moved his desk, right? And we saw in the other videos that they want the Chromebook. It was specifically, you can see Tim when he um, puts it up on the fifth, that they want the Chromebook to point towards the table. You can see him almost adjust it in that video. And I understand why in any other circumstance that may seem like very unreasonable supervision for a child. A kid should be able to use their devices how they want. However, when a... No, they should not be able to use it how they want. I don't know about you parents out there, but I had stated earlier, I have to, when he does this, he's got to do homework this evening. He's got a, a couple of papers he's got to type up for a science project. So I've got to relinquish the computer that I'm on now and let him do that. But even if he wasn't on my computer to type and print stuff up, he'd still be in my room doing his homework. And the computer stays up here being charged at night because I know good and well. And he smiled at me when I said, no, you're bringing that up because I know you're going to be up on it while everybody's in bed. You're going to be goofing on that laptop on YouTube or whatever it is you're doing, looking up music because he, he plays guitar. And he's like, smirks. I was like, yeah, I know exactly what you're going to do. So, yeah, I have to go above and beyond. I guess some people might think that if it's going above and beyond that. I'm controlling his uh, access to the iP his school iPad. Now, I have no control over it while he's at school. But the school can check the history on it and things of this nature. But when he's at home, I don't let him have it down in his room 24 hours a day. Because we know, parents, we know what they're going to do. Everybody's asleep, snoring away, and they're just goofing, and then they don't get enough sleep. So, no, I have it up here. Yes, it's an inconvenience for me. I'll admit it. But they, but you do what you got to do. They could have did the same thing. Kept his iPad. You come in the house. You can sit at the dinner table. We'll all have snacks, and you can be doing your homework. No, you got to be locked in the room. So he has to hide things because he wants to get to the computer? Yeah. He wants something to do. A 14-year-old is using their devices in a manner that is destroying school property, that is breaking into the school's IT system, that is doing searches that the parents do not approve of and that are unsafe. Then a parent, like Tim Ferriter, decides, I have to remove your technology. And when you use it, you have to be monitored. Because as we testified, this is not the first time he jailbroke a school laptop. It happened at his school in Jupiter. It happened at his school in Basis. He broke into the IT system at Immaculate Heart. This is a consistent pattern. And this you can't is break fault. school it's property. It's right? Someone fault. has to pay for that. Someone it's has to fault. answer for that. And what never happened is that Tim Ferreter called the police or told the school, take my kid to jail. We're committing a crime. He said, I'm going to handle it myself. And though he handled it very poorly, as you'll see here, there was a reason for everything. If it was super bad, wouldn't he been expelled? Now, he was, she said something about him being kicked out.
I mean, did he get suspended for a few days or did they expel him? Because most private schools, they run a background check. There's a criteria for uh, getting into the school. So I don't know what's going on there. Thing that he did. And so we're going to watch these videos, which were um, showcased by the state, so that you can see what they presented and then previously what was the context to what happened. Because as you'll see, it was not about stealing candy. It was about stealing an eye touch that did not belong to him. I told him something. Stand up. I told him something. Don't tell me what. This is your one chance. Don't look at me like an asshole. You want to tell me something or not? Uh, I have a nightmare. Yeah, from where? Uh, blue, blue where? Uh, green bed. Stealing again? What the, I mean, fuck, really? what the fuck is wrong with you? You're stealing. So fucking like, disappointing. Chocolate? And then you're still, you got so much stuff in your room. You're fucking great. You're just such, such a disappointment. You're going to lose. I'm going to take you out of that school. And you're going to be in this room. He's gonna gonna be, you're, you're this close. Because I can't trust shit you do. I'm going to put the angle bracelet back on. And then you can try to Why fucking run away if you want and do all the bullshit you do. Why but do I'm going to lock your ass down. Give me a fucking break. I'm sick of the bullshit. You're a big boy. You're going to steal. You're going to talk to police. I'm going to give you a fucking real deal. Okay? You're going to steal from our fucking house? Again? What are the shit you got in here? Because you're going to lose it all in about two seconds. Lose every fucking thing. All All this shit. I told you not to unplug that fucking thing. Right? Yeah. Do you listen to me? Yeah. Bullshit, you yeah, didn't. You didn't. You didn't tell it it. To plug this in, and then you, you're just a liar, Ronan. Just keep lying. You lied really when I asked you. You can't. You're a big boy. You're gonna steal. You're gonna talk to. Throughout their closing argument, the state, uh, when showing you some of these videos and Tim's own statement, says that's malice. That's anger. This is how maliciously is defined. Wrongfully, intentionally, and without legal justification or excuse. It later says that the primary purpose of the acts was to cause the victim unjustifiable pain or injury. In every video that you see in this case, you will see that there was a reason for what Tim... Oh, my God. So it was justified to lock him up and talk ugly to him constantly? I mean, why didn't they keep coming there and go, Oh, son, I love you. I wish you wouldn't do this. You're really stressing your mother out. Help me out here. No, it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You fucking doing this again? And then the mom's like, Oh, my God, you're stealing again? I mean, it's just hammer, hammer. Like this, that's all they have in their tool bag is a, a sledgehammer. I don't see any comforting talking or, honey, let's let's pray together. Let's ask the Lord to help you curve your, your desire to want to steal stuff. I mean, maybe that's the problem. They needed some, some Jesus in their life. I don't know. It wouldn't have hurt. It wouldn't have hurt. At least he could have some guidelines run, going by the Ten Commandments and have some kind of moral compass. I think that's what children need. And Ferreter did. And you will also see, in light of the context in this case, that that moment that you saw, those six weeks, are a pinnacle of frustration, right? Right? That tone, that frustration that you are hearing. I don't think that's true. <clears throat> because that was the six weeks in Florida. What about all the times that you, they were mistreating him in Arizona? When he was even younger. He's just a child. He ain't a teenager yet. is after years 
of continuous efforts. I want to talk next about the child neglect instruction. Um, in the instruction, one of the things that the state has to prove is that the parent did not provide care supervision and services necessary to maintain Ronan's physical or mental health. The state talked about the child neglect instruction <laughs> briefly. Um, in this Locking anybody in a room where you can't get out, if there was a fire, he would be dead. I, I think that right there is just is intent particular case we can see so for example the state said that there is no record of any treatment after 2019 as we discussed that's not the case and that's not what dr rapa testified to in fact dr rapa relied on medical records from about 2019 to 2021 where was being taken routinely to the doctor. Dr. Stuart Graham testified that there's no evidence of malnourishment. And the reason we felt that was important as the defense is because of this ongoing discussion about control over food, which as you saw from the videos is not consistent with the facts. When he was in trouble, he would be given food in his room. He even said when we talked about the meals, he said he got the peanut butter and bananas on bread and he said he was a pescatarian. And so I said, so you were given a meal for a pescatarian? And he said, yes. When you watch the videos, you'll see that the family is eating, is out with them, and there are times when he's in trouble and he has to eat in his room. You'll also see that the other kids are not eating around the table without everyone's grabbing and going and running like any family. No, they treated him different than the other children. We talked about his ability to manipulate the air conditioning and how that's not neglect, that there was a safety concern there after he almost started the electrical fire. Oh, he went to the doctor Lord. routinely. She needs to wrap this up. It's the same shit. So now we need to talk about whether or not there was a valid legal reason to what happened. And this applies very specifically to the unlawful caging <sighs> element of aggravated child abuse and to false imprisonment. So under the law for false imprisonment, I want to read it to exactly. So it wasn't false imprisonment? It was okay to, to lock him up? That you forcibly, secretly, or by threat confine, imprison, or restrain him against his will, and that you had no lawful authority to do so. Well, nobody knew about it. Parents do have lawful authority to contain their children. Sustain. crap. The jury will rely on the court statement of the law not counsel statement. Damn. When a parent has a child, right, a really young child, who has to, um, you know, we're talking about a toddler here, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. Um, when you have a child who can't be trusted, right, they are contained. And as a parent, you do have a right to put your child in a timeout. You don't have a right for it to rise to the level of abuse, and I'm not trying to suggest that at all. What I am saying is that a parent can make a decision that the safety of that child, and in this particular case, is running away, as you saw from Tim, who was saying, you've got me forever, but you have to stop. Because if you keep running away and you keep lying to people about who you are, you're gonna get hurt in this world. You have the ability, and that's why it's lawful authority, to say, you cannot leave your room. Sustained. As to the unlawful caging, that parental affirmative defense applies to the entirety of aggravated child abuse. Oh so when God. we're talking about whether a parent's actions... I'm going to overrule that based on prior conferences that the court had with both sides on jury instructions applies to the entirety of aggravated child abuse, that parental affirmative defense. And so the decision that you're making is not would I have done that in Tim's s s s situation, but whether Tim felt it was reasonable to do that in light of the unique circumstances Sustained. that he was him for years. facing as a parent. I abused him for years. to disregard the last comment of counsel. Oh my God! May continue, Ms. Moran. This, she that needs to finish. element that you are determining, right, That's as to what a reasonable parent would do, it is under these circumstances, and the circumstances that Tim Ferrader was facing are different 
than the circumstances of another person who may be in that chair. The circumstances that... Hey, y'all let me know in the comments, is this wearing you out? We're an hour and 40 minutes in this, and she is still going to convince them that it wasn't malice or cruel or child abuse. Good Lord. She's... I know he has a right to a defense, and but damn, she's repeating this. It's like you're kicking a dead horse kind of in a way. I don't know. It's just... I've grown tired of it. I don't know if the jury feels like I feel, but I'm just like, oh, please stop. I'm done. <laughs> that Tim Ferrater was facing are important in your determination. Oh. Because he had a child who, as Dr. Rappa testified, had no impulse control, wasn't stopping, and who, by his own testimony, was breaking the rules routinely despite knowing My that there were boundaries. My boy did that in elementary school. And these are not school. just minor incidents. They the state me can nuts. pinpoint a few minor incidents. But the reality is that their own expert knows that the child had an attachment disorder. That expert testified that there were no suspensions in the record. That's not true, and Dr. Rappa explained that and admitted to that in his own deposition, which Dr. Rappa relied on. This idea Ooh. that the behavior was so minimal that it Nobody didn't matter. Nobody said that. Couldn't be further from the truth. Nobody said that. I don't there recall anybody testifying that it was minimal. <sighs> to me, what stands out is that it doesn't justify what the parents did. Yeah, the kid was a turd. He did stuff. But you've been locking him up and abusing him for years which made it worse. Yes, that's cruel and malicious. Where's the love? Where are you hugging him? Where's these videos? Doctor's visits as early as 2017, when Ronan was probably eight years old, oh documenting, as Dr. Rappa testified to, uncontrollable tantrums that are consistent with having an attachment disorder of harming other kids at school. There are school records that Dr. Rappa testified to saying this is getting dangerous and it is not stopping, no. right? That's what she said. No, it's that lack of predictability said. and the persistence that is really important in understanding the circumstances that Tim Ferreter had. Because those are the only two things we can rely on, right? Is that when you ask someone to stop doing something, they'll stop. And that when you, and of course it's a little different with a child, you give them a little bit more room to grow, but there comes a point where that stops too, where it's becoming dangerous, oh where they're not God. allowed to run out of the house in the middle of the night, where they're not allowed to steal knives from a location where the knives do not belong to them. The fact that they did not utilize the knife doesn't matter for a 10 year old. You shouldn't have knives. The kid, boys love knives. The fact knives. that you are doing searches on your computer for violent things. You're not allowed to have access to computers if you do that. Boys so those circumstances are unique to Tim Ferreter. And that lack of predictability Dr. Rappa talked about, right? We expect people to act in a certain way. And the thing about that impulse control and lack of emotional regulation oh is that there is no expectation with Ronan. There are good days and there are bad days. And you see that in the video. There are days where he's hanging out and nothing's happening. And there are days where he is so frustrated he is screaming in his room. Those good days and bad days are consistent based on what Dr. Rappa and Wade Myers testified about with someone with that attachment issue or complex PTSD. That both admit the ferreters didn't cause. <coughs> and behaviors and issues <laughs> consistent finish. prior to 2018. This is, this, I'm being tortured with this closing argument. After I am done. Uh, oh the state God. has the opportunity to have a rebuttal. I do not have that opportunity. This is the last time that I get to talk to you. And so I want to... Yeah, the state's going to come out and rebuttal everything she says. I don't even know if... I, I'm going to probably do it in a separate video. This video is way too long. ...to um, discuss, again, reasonable doubt. Before I do that, I want to oh, talk a little bit about, I'm please. sorry, the jury credibility instruction. Finish. 
I you heard testimony from that, and the state talked about how it was consistent oh with what he said. What you will recall about my colleague's cross-examination of FNA and also mine of is that there were things that were either not remembered or misremembered. And I don't think that these kids are lying. I think that as a teenager who has her own life going on and doesn't always remember and doesn't know everything that happened with Right? Her parents are not sister. telling her every single thing. Oh, my God. Mr. Wah had asked her about specific acts that had happened, and she didn't know about them. She what? also said that he never went to a marching band practice, and we were permitted to admit this exhibit showing at her marching band practice that he was never permitted to do homework in the house. And there he is doing homework with her in the house. And the state can say all they want yeah, that, oh, these you know, point, minimal incidents, they don't. At some point. They probably stopped him from doing homework in the house, and that's what she remembers. Don't minimize this, that's that, or possible. the other, but it does challenge the credibility of the witnesses. Oh, my God. Because we initially said that he never got food, uh, or I'm sorry, that he occasionally was fed in Florida. You can see on the videos that's not the case. You can also see that when I questioned him, I you know, went up to him with his deposition and said, look, when you were in de uh, a deposition and sworn under oath, you said you got every meal. And he said, that's right. I agree. So at the end of the day, these are. He got to eat, but he was still locked up. Oh, my God. Children. And the best evidence is going to be the videos that you see. And I encourage you to watch that 14 hour video as, as best oh, you can during gosh. the course of this. Um, so now let's talk about reasonable doubt. So the oh, instruction that you will get. And the judge has read to you, but I want to highlight a portion of it, is this. <sighs> a reasonable doubt is not a mere possible doubt, a speculative, imaginary, or forced doubt. Such a doubt must not influence you to return a verdict of not guilty if you have an abiding conviction of guilt. On the other hand, if, if after considering carefully, comparing and weighing all the evidence, there is not an abiding conviction of guilt, or if having a conviction, it is one which is not stable, but one which wavers and vacillates, then the charge is not proved beyond every reasonable doubt, and you must find the defendant not guilty because the doubt is reasonable. Please. Reasonable doubt oh. is one of the earliest sort of, I guess, terms that we learn about in our civic education, our legislature, and here's why it's so important. Um, this is a decision that is probably more permanent in every important decision you have made in your life. You will go back there as jurors, you will come to a verdict, and that will be it. And you could you go get home. married and decide to have a divorce. Oh my God. Sustained. No, she didn't just say that. This decision Good is Lord. one that you cannot change, unlike many decisions in your regular life. And that is why we have an instruction that says if you waver and vacillate, if you think, you know what, he shouldn't have done that, I think he might be guilty, but then in another minute you're like, there was a reason for this, I think that affirmative defense applies, you must find him not guilty. If you think he might be guilty, you must find him not guilty. If you think he could be guilty, you must find him not guilty. And the one thing that I am telling you is you do not have to like Tim Ferritter and you do not have to like what he did. Because what he did was wrong. And he will have to live with that for the rest of his life. Drop the mic. And that ain't a mic drop moment. When testified, he oh said, Tim and Tracy were just acting out a frantic surprise of my emotions. And he said, forgive them and move on. Sustained. That is his testimony. And so when you are back there deliberating. Because kids understand love unconditionally. That Tim Ferritter made bad choices and you do not have to agree with Lord. them. But whether or not what he did amounts to a crime under the law is a different question altogether. And it is one that the state has not proven. I'm asking that you find him not guilty. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Murad. Rebuttal. Oh, my God.
I might have to do another video for the rebuttal. I let me. I don't even know if anybody's going to make it to the end of this video. Good Lord. This needed to be over an hour ago. Literally. I'm sorry. But I am aggravated with the, the repetition of blaming him. Blame the kid. Blame the kid. They didn't know what to do. Blah, blah, blah. He's so bad. Blah. Oh, my God. I... I I, it just got to be too much. <laughs> well, if you made it to the end of the video, let me know what you think. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and it's okay. I can take it. <laughs> but uh, I think the state proved beyond a reasonable doubt that they were a malice. They did this for years. Um, but I think I'm going to do the rebuttal on another video. I might get into that. It's still a little early. Uh, but let me know what you think. Thank you for staying this long. If you did, and if you didn't, you're not even going to hear this to say, wow, I'm sorry it went this long. They were driving me crazy. But anyway, have a wonderful day wherever you are in this wonderful world of ours. And peace out.